Um, good morning for everyone. Uh, our work is the log logistic mapping for the generalization of the lifetime distribution. It is a joint work with Professor Karin Anay Esquerdo from University of Bath and Francisco Lousada from University of Sao Paulo, okay, who are my advisors. Um, I will talk about, um, I'm going to talk about an introduction, the formulation of the model, some survival analysis aspects, uh, some main properties, the parameter estimation that we are using the MLEs for that, uh, a simulation stood by using the Monte Carlo experiment, and some conclusions and reference. First of all, the statistical literature is filled um, with several continuous univariate distribution, particularly in the literature of survival analysis that is growing the last few in the last, um, let me say, five years. Um, viral extensions of some well-known distribution like the Weibull distribution, log logistic distribution, is uh, have been developed during these two last last uh, two decades. And this kind of approach, extensions and generalizations of distributions uh, have been achieved through many, distribu many different approaches. Okay, one simple approach is the quadratic hang transmutation map that was proposed by Shaw and Buckley in 2007. It's a simple way to extend, extend the uh, lifetime distribution um, and to generate, for example, distribution that is a little bit more flexible and can uh, fit different kinds of behaviors in the data set. Uh, basically, the author, Shaw and Buckley, are adding a new parameter, let's call lambda, sorry, the lambda parameter, that are, is responsible to include some skewsness in the baseline model. Okay, uh, as a result, we have including this new parameter to a baseline model, for example, for the, in the Weibull model or the log logistic model, we, are, we continue having as a result a simple model um, and a little bit more flexible than the baseline model. And uh, another good point of using the transmutation maps is that the model that is resulting from that transmutation continue being interpretable, okay? Um, also, uh, as in everything in life, you have the, bad po the good points and the bad points. One bad point of using the transmutation map is that when we are including this parameter, we are turning the uh, extension a little bit more flexible, but this parameter is restricted to lie in the interval from minus one to one. That can be a problem in some practical situation, um, particularly when we are um, estimating in the limits, like when the parameter lambda is too close to minus one or too close to one. Uh, dealing uh, in front or uh, facing to that problem, then we are proposing an alternative class of mappings, okay, that gives more flexibility. We are in, and uh, including to the baseline model just one parameter, in this case is the omega parameter that is uh, set in the real line. There is no restrictions, okay. Uh, our model uh, is an alternative model to this class of model to the transmuted maps, and we call that as the L transmuted family of models. Okay, I will explain why is the L is L because of the log logistic construction, and this new family of model, this new, new class of model, uh, has the property that this extra parameter can take any real value. And without that restriction, okay, of the parameter space, uh, we have a model that retains good characteristic of the models, like it's continue being simple, simply because we are including the only one parameter in the baseline model. It's more flexible than the baseline model, and it's more flexible if we, com we compare to the transmutation map proposed by the Shaw and Buckley, okay? And 
as a good property, it continues being interpretable. Uh, the model let y be a continuous positive hand variable because we are uh, representing the lifetime of some individual. And let's consider the family D as G of y given theta is the cumulative distribution function, okay? And our objective is not only extend the model, it's not that simple. We'd like to extend this model uh, constructing a large family of distribution that contains the family G, okay? Being more specifically, we would like to find a family of distribution F, let's call F the L transmutation, okay? That at the point omega, when omega is equal to zero, we recover the baseline distribution G, okay? Then we, um, at the point, when the cumulative distribution of Y at the point Omega, when omega is equal to zero, then we recover the cumulative distribution of the baseline family. Okay? In the sense, we would like that the new, this new family F, okay, uh, generalize the family of D, but we would like that this family F be centered around G in the scale of the new parameter, the omega parameter. Uh, the model, then, uh, given a parametric family of the uh, densities of G, then the cumulative distribution of the L transmutation is given by the first equation when omega is the, in the real line. And at the point zero, we recover the cumulative distribution of the baseline model. Uh, the same for the probability density function. Uh, the PDF function is given by the first uh, equation when, o when omega is set in the real line and when omega is equal to zero we will recover the PDF function uh, the PDF function of the baseline model okay uh, this is the uh, those are the plots um, that represents the effect of omega and lambda in the cumulative distribution function in the left side, we have the uh, cumulative distribution function and the effect of omega for the L transmuted model. And on the right side, we have for the transmuted model that, that was proposed by Shaw and Buckley. We are using, in that case, as a baseline distribution, the uniform one, that is the black line in the center, okay? And we are including the value is the L transmuted, doing some transmutation by using the L transmuted model, um, including omega, positive omegas and negative omega effects. In, in that case, uh, positive lambda and negative lambda. But you can see that our model is a little bit more flexible as our, the parametric space of the parameter that we are including the baseline model, there is no restriction as the case of lambda that it is restricted to be between minus one and one. Uh, the construction is simple. Uh, let R, given a omega, be a function that goes to zero, one, two, zero, one. Uh, be a family of increasing mappings. It should be increasing such that the R of U, given an omega is equal to zero, is the identity. Then auto automatically, we can generalize G by simply defining the F of Y given an omega, an omega is equal to the R at the point G of Y given an omega. Okay, G is the cumulative distribution, okay? And Shaw and Buckley use the following, the R of U given a, um, uh, given a lambda, sorry, is equal to one plus lambda times u minus the lambda times u squared. It's the um, uh, transmutation, quadratic transmutation, okay? And we are proposing the following. We are proposing to use the cumulative distribution function f and the quantile that is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function to construct the r of u given now omega, okay? Now omega is, no, there is no restriction. Uh, it's equal to f e, e, uh, at the point x of omega, applied to the q at the point u, okay? 
Then, spe specifically, we are using the log logistic cumulative distribution. Then, uh, for the log logistic cumulative distribution, given by this uh, equation, and the quantile function, we are using the scale and champion parameters fixed at the point one. Okay, then by using simple algebra, okay, simple. Um, then we can um, generate the all-transmuted distribution by using the R that was defined before, okay, and the log logistic construction. Uh, some survival analysis aspects. The survival function of the L-transmuted model is defined to by the survival function of the baseline model that we are using, uh, divided by 1 minus 1 minus x of omega uh, times the cumulative distribution function of the baseline model. Uh, the hazard of the L-transmuted model is defined by x of y, uh, x of, sorry, om omega times the um, hazard rate function of the baseline model. Uh, divided by the same denominator, okay, as I said before. Uh, one good property of this L-transmuted model is that when Y goes to infinity, is a, uh, we can see, uh, and we can prove analytically, that the, um, uh, the hazard of the L-transmuted L -transmuted model goes to the hazard of the baseline model, okay? In that picture, we are, in that plot, we are, uh, we are considering the exponential hazard height, okay, that is constant, and we are L-transmuting, okay? And when Y increase, the curves goes to, to a constant, con constant, um, curve that represents, that is represented for the uh, exponential model. Okay, another property is that the quantile function for the L transmutation is defined in terms of the quantile function of the baseline model. Then uh, is immediate and that if I want to generate, for example, um, uh, uh, values from the L transmuted model, uh, if the baseline has an inverse, okay, analytically express uh, the inverse function of the cumulative distribution, is easy to find to generate um, values from that distribution, okay? It by using the inverse method. It was the method that we used to generate some values for our uh, numerical experiment. Uh, the parameter estimation, you are using the MLEs, okay? Let's consider for that the Weibull, param the Weibull distribution as the baseline distribution, and let's consider the, then the Y1 to YON be a sample of the Weibull L-transmuted distribution. Uh, for an example, we are include some covariates, then the X vector is the regressors, and the gamma X is the linear predictor, okay? Uh, then the likelihood is defined by that function. B, b uh, sorry, beta is, the parameter beta is responsible for the shape of the distribution, okay, is the shape parameter, and the phi is the uh, scale parameter. For the numerical experiment, we are considering the Monte Carlo experiment to investigate the fine sample uh, behavior of the MLEs. First of all, uh, we are considering that, that, sorry, oh, okay. Uh, first of all, we are considering the Weibull l transmuted distribution without covariate, but in the next example, I am going to consider uh, two covariates, okay? We won't estimate the, um, uh, the intercept of the uh, linear predictor well, since we are estimating the scale of the Weibull distribution, okay? Uh, let's consider 5,000 replications of a Monte Carlo. The sample size is will range from uh, 50 to 500. That was generating according to that, that distribution by using the inverse method. Uh, since um, phi is a scale parameter, it's won't affect the results of the Monte Carlo experiment, then we are fixing phi at the point two. Uh, 
uh, we are considering also different combinations of omega and beta, as omega can be positive and negative, we are considering both, okay? And beta is the shape of the Weibull Weibull distribution, then we are setting beta at the point 0 0.5, 1, and 1 1.5 that represents decreasing constant and increasing hazards. Okay? For that experiment, we are constructing uh, confidence intervals of 95%. Okay? That intervals are generated by using the P bootstrap method. Okay? Setting only the, in the um, sample that was generated and estimating. Uh, the coverage probability of that those intervals for omega, phi, and beta are given for are given by this to, this plot. Okay, in the x-axis we are representing the sample sizes that are in, we are increasing the sample size, and in the y-axis we are presenting the probability coverage of that intervals. Okay, we can see that the the, pro the coverage probability of those intervals are too close to the nominal values, that is 95%. Uh, now, we did the same experiment, the same example, but uh, considering um, including some covariates. In fact, we are including two covariates, okay? Gamma 0 and gamma 1 will be the linear predictors for that. Uh, covariators, then we are considering the same, beta to the point of 0 0.5, 1, and 1 1.5, and the confidence intervals was considering f at 95% per and by using the same method. Uh, for that, we have the four plots, okay? The first plot is for the gamma 0, gamma 1 parameter, uh, for phi, and beta parameters. This, uh, the same conclusion as I said before, the, nom the um, coverage probability is, are too close to the nominal values for all parameters, okay? Some conclusions. We presented an, an alternative way to transmute positive distributions, okay? Uh, despite having a small number of parameters, it's still flexible. The l transmutive is also interpretable, since the interpretation of, this, of the k-parameters is kept the same as in the transmuted model proposed by Shaw and Buckley. Uh, the reg uh, Weibull regression well transmuted model was presenting as an example, showing some analytic expression for that. A simulation study was used to show that the asymptotic confidence intervals have a coverage probability very close to 95%. The main references we use the Marshall and Woking book and the Shaw and Buckley paper. And is that. Thank you.